If you was alive in the late 90s, you may remember just how much of a cultural phenomenon WWF wrestling was. The PlayStation and N64 both had their fair share of wrestling games, and to be fair, most of them were freaking awesome. In the year 2000, however, one game was released that would completely change everything in the world of wrestling games forever. <laughs> oh yes, and I think you know what game I'm talking about. WWF Smackdown, of course, and this game was absolutely jam-packed with amazing things for you, the awesome wrestling fan, to get stuck into. It was the first ever WWF game developed by a company called Ukes, and just in case you're not familiar with who they are, let me tell you now. This was a massive deal for the future of wrestling games. Ukes was making history in Japan with New Japan Pro Wrestling throughout the 90s. They decided to join forces with THQ for Smackdown, and this move couldn't have been more perfectly timed. The gaming industry was changing and people were warming more to the idea of loyally sticking to one series and buying its annual release. Now, this is something EA out of all companies did really well with. By the year 2000, they already had a cult following for games such as FIFA, Madden, PGA Tour and NBA Live. Weirdly though, as popular as wrestling games are, they never bothered getting the license for WWF. This is where THQ stepped in, partnered up with Ukes, and the annual Smackdown series was born. WWF Smackdown came with 12 different game modes for you, the awesome wrestling fan, to throw your opponent around in. You could play the usual vanilla single match, but most of the other game modes were a lot more fun because they each offered something incredibly unique. Cage matches were particularly memorable because the only way to survive was to climb out before your opponent does. I think also though a part of its charm was like, when you're watching wrestling on telly and you see that cage, you know exactly what's about to go down. So being the centre point of all of that hype with your favourite wrestler really did feel special. Another game mode that stood out was Royal Rumble. This mode featured up to 32 wrestlers battling it out to be the ultimate WWF champion. Four wrestlers start in the ring, then, as they are eliminated, new wrestlers run in and join the action. I remember this mode being particularly hard, and if I'm being completely honest, I've never actually made it to the end of a Royal Rumble. I bet you did though, being the superstar that you are. Let's play a game. Write in the comments which wrestler you won a Royal Rumble with, and if someone replies saying they've beaten it with a worse wrestler than yours, you're out. Speaking of being out, remember to subscribe if you want to know when my newest retro gaming videos are out. It could be about one that you completely forgot just how much you loved. Now, playing the various game modes was fun, but really, the real action, where it all comes together in some chaotic random ball of madness was in season mode. Here you can select a wrestler, then take them on the ultimate wrestling journey, battling against the cream of WWF wrestling whilst they throw everything at you. Unless of course you do it on easy mode, then it's a piece of cake. Yeah, it was pretty easy. If you wanted to make your wrestling career even more exciting, you can create your own superstar and do it all with them. Here's the character I made. He's a handsome fella, ain't he? I named him Retro Sambam and, uh, hang on a minute, why does the nickname field say default? No worries, I'm sure if I just leave it, the game will register that my guy doesn't have a nickname and he should be called Retro Sambam. If you smell what the rock is cooking. Brilliant. Before starting a season with your newly created player, the game allows you to participate in a pre-season mode. This is a very good idea because as you can see, Default has got hardly any skills and zero friends, and it's here where all of this would be obtained. The pre-season runs for up to 10 in-game years, and as you play through the various game modes, you will unlock points to upgrade your player's skills. 
You will also meet other wrestlers backstage and this is where alliances and enemies are made. There's no actual talking when your player meets them, it's more a case of receiving one paragraph of dialogue and either agreeing with them or telling them to go and swivel. Who you're allied with and who you're enemies with becomes very important as the game progresses, particularly in game modes like Special Referee. Special Referee is a one vs one match, but the twist is it's being refereed by another wrestler. If your character is allied with the ref, he'll count quicker for you at the pin. But if the referee doesn't like you, not only will he count a lot slower, he'll throw attacks at you as well. Because of all of this, it was very important that Default made friends with the right people. Once your player has leveled up as much as you want them to, they can leave the pre-season behind and start competing in the real season for championship belts. So, WWF Smackdown is a pretty solid game, but I did mention in the title that it's also very important. Why is that? Being released all the way back in 2000, this game was the pioneer of a wrestling series which is still going incredibly strong today. The Smackdown name was last used in WWE Smackdown vs Raw 2011, then in 2012, THQ published their final game for the series, passing the torch on to a little company called 2K. Ukes, however, continued to develop these games until WWE 2K19, but after a fallout between the two, Ukes was dropped and replaced by Visual Concepts. Over the years, the series developed a very large and fiercely loyal fanbase. Many people have created an absolute ton of cherished memories playing their favourite wrestling series, and it's kind of mad to think that it all started 24 years ago with this little gem right here. What I really love about WWF Smackdown is just the sheer amount of detail that was included in this game. All of the players were unique and felt completely different from one another to control. They all had different moves, including their special moves, as well as a full motion video each which played before a match. The graphics of the players' faces were, in my humble opinion, superb. Yuke's done a fantastic job getting the most out of the PS1's hardware limitations and really showed the world what this Japanese company knows about making a successful wrestling series. If I could add just one thing to WWF Smackdown, it would be commentary during fights. That's the only thing that I think is lacking in this game and it would have worked wonders to raise the atmosphere, but to be fair, audio clips take up a lot of room and so do FMVs. I'm assuming that was a pretty tricky decision to make during production, but I think having FMVs over commentary was ultimately the right choice. WWF Smackdown had everything a wrestling fan in the year 2000 could possibly want, and more. It will be remembered as the pioneer that kicked off a fantastic series and a game changer that took the championship belt and knocked all other competition out. Thank you so much for watching, please remember to give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and please subscribe if you want to see more nostalgic content just like this. If you have any games that you want me to make a video of, mention them in the comments and I'll add them to my list. Thanks again, hopefully see you in the next video.